being stacked up by the Callista. So definitely going to be a bit more on the defensive end when it comes to 2v2 laning. Obviously, Braum as well does have a strong level one though, but I definitely feel like the draft is a lot more even here. I think T1 have given themselves a lot more tools. And it's a T1 draft. You've got the pick potential. You have layers pass to continue putting the harass on. Here comes that TP. This has been a disaster oh. a few times. And he thought that they backed as well as, oh dear. Okay, that is first blood going over to Jackie Love as Mako tanks up the turret happily. The short name, but part of the power of this pick is just you go Darren Shield, you go Fleet Footwork, you go second win. You gotta just shake it up. And now Zayas does have flash here, but might be in trouble. Yeah, uh, the teleport didn't work out. Let's see whether the flash does as he gets Bramble smashed back. Faker is here though, the teleport very early on and now it's 369 that might be overextended. The charm doesn't land though, Orbit Deception, fair bit of damage onto Tien and if anything, Faker has just oh, saved his top lane. Can they actually find something more? As the Foxfires come on in, 369 going to be the first target. He gets under the turret, but the charm will find him. And now Tien's moved the wrong way. He wants to take a ward for his trouble, but he will burn down instead. The second charm hits and Faker's teleport timing here is so fast. They're able to turn the play around. Looked really rough for Zayas. He's not going to get punished by 369, but the gank comes through and Faker turns it around now in mid. It will cost him a little bit of farm here, but he was already up on farm, already had mid controlled. Zayas? Yeah, um, Zayas just comes back. Faker completes his back as the scrap shield will come on um, in. With 369, we'll pick up the return solo kill. Yeah, so not sure about that weird. one. Bit of a weird one. Uh, and the wave <laughs> is also with his hand on his forehead right now. <laughs> the wave's also in such a terrible spot. Looks like 369 is actually just gonna clear it out and go for a reset. But yeah, Zayas really fumbling on the back of what was a great play, and now we're getting some contest over these grubs, but Zayas isn't here to back up. That is gonna be one of them taken by Tian as Cream moving on in. He will have to go back to his soul, which could mean a three versus one, make it a four versus one. So Tian is sort of left in the lurch. He kind of knew it was gonna happen, still has his flash. Yeah. And that is a lot of power. This Jackie Love Mako bottom lane is formidable, but they are playing so, so well here in this game. As Ona moves on forward, Cream, of course, can just snap back to that unbound soul. As Flash forward, okay, Tien going to be the target, and he's going to return the favor. They find Faker just by himself after the buy over extends, and Tien on about 50 health just walks away. Still, Ona is able to do some battle, but he will not be vault breaking forward. T1. Not in position to contest. We'll see what soul comes of this as we're one and one apiece. This is not going to be the same type of game with Grubs where there's a Tristana in a side that can absolutely run away with the game. At least T1 pick up the consolation prize. Yeah, they're going to be able to head on over there. Oh, now might be Mako getting caught out. Azaeus is moving on in here. Does have the equalizer up and available. And Mako, he is not going to get them to use it. Never mind. There goes the equalizer. And they had to invest a couple of ultimates in the end to take down the Braum. Should mean that a couple of extra grubs are going to go over to T1 off the back end of this one. So still a good play. Yeah, managing to pick him up at the end. He saw Mako thought maybe just to be able to survive. But it's kind of showing the power of this T1 composition with his pick potential. And... This is a pretty long fight. Yeah, uh, the rend has to be used. There's a flash forward from Jackie Love. He lines up the Mystic shot. Oh! Manages to tank the turret with the barrier. Trouble here is the minion wave is going to move on in. Jackie Love and Mako just repositioning towards the mid lane. Gumiyushi, though, will get some free time with this bottom outer. Thanks to the extra grubs, of course, Into a five-step turret. But T1 using their spike incredibly well, even with no objective online. And the fact that they're just going to get this tier two bot, it's such a huge influx of gold, though. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous as Mako throws out the ulti, looks to interrupt owner as he walks his way in, but the teleport from Zayas should mean this bottom lane are going down as Mako able to walk his way out. The Foxfire is enough to do it though as Faker picks up another one. TP almost back up as well. 369 just used his, so if this goes on for much longer, he will be able to join in as this Rift Herald will crash through. They're going to try to take out this turret. Big win here for top esports. Great neutral contest into turret take. Yeah, going to be the dragon fully taken down. They did manage to deal with the minion wave, but you can't kill she Shelly that quickly. And so she will be helping out Tien, taking a fair bit of damage though as Ona gets back over the wall. Oh. Equalizer, they all lined up on top! And now the barbecue begins! The ultimate out there from Cream is decent! Still hit by the hostile takeover though as he flashes away. There's the cease and desist as Jackie Love looks to try and get himself out of it. But once again, it's his flame spitter that's doing all the work. A double kill for Gumi Yushi.
Ibushi, and they'll take the turret on top. What an it's going to be at a heavy price because it means you're so far up there. When the turn comes through from T1, you've got to play respectfully around all the ults, all the engages, the CC. Baroon, he's almost 2,000 gold ahead, has two items. The Rickmaker is so good for this brawly composition. And T1 are winning on both sides of the map. There's no inner and mid. They're using that prior incredibly well. Here comes Guma. Yeah, ultimate out immediately from Cream, but there's the follow up from Gumiushi. He gets slowed down though. And that is very important for keeping these top esports members alive. But this time, it's T1 that can then... Uh, there's no way they can rush over for a trade. T1 kind of have this one locked up in terms of both objectives. It's essentially checkmate. Top esports could try to flip the Baron. Could take a crazy on risk the Baron, here. But it's suffocation here and not wanting to make any risks on this map. As Mako possibly caught out, there's a handshake. He puts up the door. He's soaking a lot of damage. But Faker dives in. He picks up Tien, who does have the twisted advance to try and get forward. It's once again the barbecue, and Faker is taken down. Trees on top of it. Jackie Love dies off the back end. Faker, he even had the bailout available. He was never going to die, and that is a clean ace for T1. Such a decisive victory from T1 to bounce back on this one. They don't risk the barn flip, and when the engage comes through, they connect on every single target. 5 0 ace. Looking to end the game here. Mako has to check. They have no vision. Somebody has to go in. If they don't, the Baron is lost. They walk right in to this chain CC composition. The snipe from Zayas with the equalizer and T1 are going to equalize this series. Yeah, and that is stomp after stomp, but on other sides of the rip, ladies and gentlemen. As the Nexus goes down, we have an even series here for the final.